I am making an Earthbound Monarch deck profile. I make I was playing around with this deck and I actually do think this might be the best way to play Earthbound at the moment. At least at the moment because I still want Konami to release the Earthbound Servants. But I played around with Monarch before and considering it's a deck that revolves around having no extra deck. So Scythe Lock isn't an issue. You lock your opponent out of your extra deck so you don't even have to play Artifact Scythe. And all I have to do is have a trait someone monster, in this case an Earthbound Immortal. They have the lock effects, so I thought, why not? And I've been playing around the deck, and it's a really fun deck to use. So starting off with the monsters, I play three copies of Edia, the Heavenly Squire. Edia has the effect of when it's normal or special summon. You can special summon a, uh, a monster, one monster with an 800 attack and a 1,000 defense from your deck. And then if Edia is... Sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one banished monarch spell trap from your, and then add it to your hand, and you can only use each effect of any of the Unleashed Squire once per turn. Then I play three copies of Mithra, the Thunder Vessel. Mithra can be special summoned from, uh, from your hand to, to your field, and then you give your opponent a, a Thunder Vassal token, which has 800 attack and 1,000 defense, level 2 light, or level 1 light thunder monster. But, and then, or Mithra also has the effect of its tribute summon, or tributed for a tribute summon, then you can get one additional tribute summon for that turn. Then I play one copy of, eight, or one, three copies of Eidos the Underworld Squire. Eidos has the effect of... If it is normal or special summon, during that main phase you get one additional uh, tribute summon. And then you can banish from your graveyard to special summon a monster with 800 attack and 1000 defense from your deck. You can only use each effect of Eidos the Underworld Squire once per turn. Then I play three copies of Karaz, the Light Monarch. Karaz has the effect of when it's normal or special summon, target up to two fate, uh, cards on the field, destroy them. And then the owners of those destroyed cards then gets to draw one card for each of their cards destroyed. However, Karaz uses this effect, it cannot attack. It, or it cannot attack during the turn, it is normal or special summoned. I'm going to re, re say that last part because I read it wrong. But its last line of text is it cannot attack the turn, it is normal or special summoned. Then I play two copies of Erebus, the Underworld Monarch. Erebus has the effect of it can be tribute summoned by attributing one monster has been tribute summoned. And then when it is summoned, then you can send two different monarch spell or traps from your deck to the graveyard. Shuffle one card from your one random card from your opponent's hand back into the deck. And then once per turn, quick effect, while it's in the graveyard, you can return one monster with twenty-four hundred and a thousand defense or a monster with 2800 and a thousand defense from your graveyard to your hand. And you can only use each effect of Erebus the Underworld Monarch once per turn. Then I play two copies of Aether the Heavenly Monarch. Aether has the effect of you can tribute, or you can be tribute summoned using one monster that's already been tribute summoned. And if it is summoned, then. You can send two Monarch Spell Traps with different names from your deck to the graveyard. Special summon a um, Monarch from your deck. Or a monster at 2400 and 1000 defense from your deck, but it returns to your hand during the end of the turn. And then during the main phase, Quake Effect, you can reveal it to then Tribute Summon Aether from your hand. And then for my favorite part of the deck, I play one copy of Earthbound Immortal Weary Coach Araska. Weary Coach Araska has the effect of when it's, or all Earthbound Immortals share the effect of if there's not a field spell, they blow up, they can't be targeted for attacks, and they can attack directly. But Weary Coach Araska's effect that makes it special is that when it's summoned, you can shuffle up to three cards on your field back to the deck. So then make your opponent discard an equal number of cards, and then he has a thousand attack for each card discarded. One copy of Earthbound Immortal Asilopiscu. Asilopiscu has the effect of when it 
When it leaves the field, except by its own effect, it then destroys all face-up monsters your opponent controls, and then inflicts 800 points of damage to your opponent for each monster destroyed by its effect. Then, one copy of Earthbound Immortal Kokoraya. Kokoraya has the a similar effect, but instead of burning or destroying all your opponent's face-up monsters and burning, it takes every card down with it. So when it leaves the field other than by its own effect, uh, then it will destroy every card in play. But if there's not an Earth a field spell in play, then all Earthbound Immortals will be destroyed, as well as you can only control the one Earthbound Immortal. Then I play one copy of Earthbound Immortal Kusulu. Kusulu has the effect if it would be destroyed in battle, then you can tribute one other monster you control, so it's not destroyed, and then you just have your opponent's life points. One copy of Earthbound Immortal Chaku Chalua. Chaku Chalua has the effect of while it's in defense position, your opponent's battle phase is skipped. And once per turn, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to half of its defense points. But if you do, Chaku Chalua cannot attack that, that turn. Earth, one copy of Earthbound Immortal Koko Pakapu. Koko Pakapu has the effect of. If it destroys an opponent's monster at battle, you know, your opponent takes damage to the destroyed monster's attack points. I don't understand that Koko Pakapu having that effect since it can't attack directly, but oh well. And then lastly, I play one copy of Earthbound Immortal Uru. Earthbound Immortal Uru can tribute one monster on your field, target a monster your opponent controls, take control of it till the end of the turn. But that is it for my monsters. Moving on to the spells. I play one copy of Set Rotation. Set Rotation lets you take two field spells from your deck, set one on each side of the field, and while a field spell is set by its effect, then you cannot activate a new field spell other than the one that's already set. So what I will typically do is give my opponent the one copy of Magical Midbreaker Field. Magical Midbreaker Field has to be activated during the main, main phase, at the start of main phase one. But while activated face up, it cannot be, your opponent cannot activate a new field spell. And then neither player can target or destroy the other opponent's monsters. So I can't target or destroy my opponent's monsters with card effects, but they can't do the same to my monsters. Then I play one Return of the Monarchs. Return of the Monarchs has the effect of you cannot special summon the extra deck. And then when you tribute summon a monster, you activate one of three effects. Or one two effects, I mean. Where you can add a monster from your deck to your hand that has 2400 attack and 1000 defense with a different name than the tribute summon monster. Or you can add a monster from your deck to your hand that has 2800 attack and 1000 defense with a different name from the tribute summon monster. And then the tribute summon monster, but in order to resolve that effect, the monster you just tribute summoned has to remain on the field. Then I play three copies of Tenacity of the Monarchs. Tenacity has the effect of you reveal a monster in your hand with 2400 attack and 1000 defense, or 2100 attack and 1000 defense. Then add a monarch spell trap in your deck to your hand, except for Tenacity of the Monarchs, you can activate one Tenacity of the Monarchs per turn. Then I play three copies of March of the Monarchs. March of the Monarchs makes it so that tribute summon monsters cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Three copies of the Monarchs Stormforth. The Monarchs Stormforth makes just activates. You, you can only activate the Monarchs Stormforth once per turn. But once per turn, you can activate it to then tribute one monster your opponent controls as if it was your own monster. Then I also play three copies of Pantheism of the Monarchs. Pantheism has a, the effect of you can send a Monarch Spot Trap from your hand to the graveyard to draw two cards. And then you can banish it from your graveyard to then reveal three mon Monarch Spot Traps from your deck. One gets out to your hand at random, the rest gets shuffled back into the deck. And you can only use that effect of Pantheism of the Monarchs once per turn. 
which means you can only search once per turn, but you can draw two cards multiple times a turn. Then, to finish off the spells, I play three copies of Domain of the True Monarchs. Domain has the, of the True Monarchs has the effect of, while you can have no extra deck, you can add out a tribute summon monster. Your opponent cannot special summon from the extra deck. You can reveal a monster with 2800 attack and 1000 defense, or 2400 attack and 1000 defense. Reduce its level by 1. And then if you're treating someone monster, it battles an opponent's monster, it gains 800 attack points. Which is the only reason I can see for Kogo Pakapu attacking a monster instead of directly. But your treat someone monster will only gain that 800 attack points if you declare the attack. So if your opponent attacks into it, then it won't gain 800. That is it for the spells. Moving on to the traps, I play one copy of the Prime Monarch and three copies of the Monarch's Erupt. The Prime Monarch, I'm thinking about putting, moving up to two, but the Prime Monarch has the effect of once per turn you target two Monarch spells and traps with different names in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck and draw one card. And then if the Prime Monarch is in the graveyard, then once per turn, you can banish a spell or tra a monarch spell trap from your graveyard, summon it as a, a monster, and it is a level a level five light fairy with a thousand attack and twenty four hundred defense. And the monarch erupt has the effect of if you control a trigger summon monster while you have no extra deck, then all monsters on the field have their effects negated unless they are a tribute summon monster. So I like this card because it's a uh, skill drain without affecting my tribute summon monsters. But that is it for the the monarch, my Earthbound Monarch deck profile. Any ideas of what, how I can improve the deck? Any ideas of decks I can see being made in the future? Or decks I like to see face each other? Feel free to comment down below. Thanks for watching.